How's it going summoners and welcome back to another Rift Guards Wild Rift video. In every game it's quite important to understand when your champion starts to beat up the enemy champions with ease. And for that we are going to take a look at 9 of the most broken item spikes in the game for you. Let's start with Fiora. This champion has been a nuisance ever since she was released. Her laning phase is just too obnoxious to deal with and people find it very hard to survive against her. Nonetheless, players came up with a solution. Avoid her overpowered level 1. To do so, you have to walk mid lane and share experience with your mid laner while you try to crash the mid wave as fast as possible. By utilizing this trick, you're attempting to stay as healthy as possible in the early game while you get closer to your required levels. Most champions at least need 2 or 3 levels to get something done against the Fiora, or rather have something similar to counterplay. Even though she has been recently nerfed, she's still an overtuned champion in terms of pure laning. You might wonder why this is such a massive problem, but trading with a Fiora is absolutely toxic in any regard. The massive range of her longevity in combination with the ability to block all incoming damage an enemy has available is quite annoying. It's not really skillful in that regard, it's just overbearing. So fortunately, we saw some changes to her second ability's cooldown in 2.6a. And don't worry guys, a bad Fiora player will find it very hard to win games as it comes down to proper macro later on. Team fights are just not that easy to play unless she's so fat that she one-shots. But if you want to make the most out of Fiora, you also need to adjust your items and if you're into carrying, I can only recommend the following items. Trinity Force into Blade of the Ruined King. That way you're deleting anything in your way without any problem and other than that, Sheen is one of your most toxic power spikes in the early game. Having this 900 gold item basically doubles the power of your first ability, which means you're the one in charge of the lane at all times. And before we continue, there's something I have to show you. The best builds for every champion, including general and laning skill order, rune setups and summoner spells, we got you more than covered. Check out our newly launched Patreon, we offer everything from exclusive Discord chat experiences, customized roles to premium coaching and more. Interested? Then if you want to support the channel, pick it here and let's go. Next up comes a champion whose playmaking potential is absurdly high. As people slowly understood that building Trinity Force is actually a disadvantage on this champion, they finally ascended. Turns out being able to just auto tag anything to death is significantly easier than being forced to play around Sheen procs that in the end deal less damage anyway. Another thing that makes Irelia so strong is her presence in lane, however it's also linked to certain conditions. If you want to play Irelia in the best way possible, you need to prepare minions in advance. But what does this mean? You want them low enough so you can use your first ability and get a reset on them while the enemy is getting closer to the wave in order to get a few last hits. After you've prepared those minions, you can vanish into the fog of war for a brief moment while hiding your third ability inside of the fog. Then instantly dash to the minion that is going to die to your first ability and pressure the enemy champion with your movement. Don't forget that the enemy champion doesn't really know about your hidden blade, so he is just going to assume that it's your first and not your second part of the flawless duet. And there you go, you'll get an easy kill. For the items, you really spike hard on Blade of the Rune King and either Wit's End or Death's Dance afterwards. The Death's Dance version is going to let you survive anything as it's the item that makes you the tankiest at that point. And now it's time for our question of the day. Which champion needs to be nerfed as fast as possible and why? As per usual, let me know in the comments below and if you like our content, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For our third champion, we have Akali. This champion has been nerfed quite a few times and lost her former glory in the early game. From being able to dominate any matchup, she is now forced to be a little bit more tame. In the past, she used to be able to cast 3 of her first abilities on level 1 and now it's only 2, which is quite the bummer for her. Adding the passive nerf on top of that as well, it's quite the huge blow for any Akali main. But you don't really have to worry about Akali being too weak as a champion. She's still more than fine in a solo queue context. I mean, she's an assassin after all. Every AD carry and squishy champion still fears her as she is still able to instantly kill them. And if you go for the right items, you'll have a much better time. So rush Prophet's pendant as it grants you a nice amount of magic pen as well as ability power. Don't go for haunting guys, 
we'd never really want to complete that item anyway, so it's just better to sit on the pendant as we complete our item build. Leandris is an item we just don't want to have. And after that, we just go for Lich Bane. Especially with the Sheen Power Spike, you're really dishing out some extra damage. If you're then able to space your auto attacks correctly and get a Sheen proc on every single empowered auto attack, it appears to be very broken. For our fourth champion on this list, we are going with Corky. This lovely carry has been a solid pick in the past and is still rocking the meta as a flexible option. In lane, he can survive almost anything without being too worried unless he makes a lot of grave mistakes. Another thing that's also worth saying is the fact that his first ability's hitbox is still untrue. It's literally a lie and it's going to hit you even when it's not supposed to hit you. But what makes Corky so strong as a champion in comparison to others? It's that he's an AD carry that primarily deals magic damage, which is really annoying to deal with. Not only that, but he's also not dependent on his auto tags alone. He's more of a spell weaver. Therefore, he's also in need of a lot of mana, so mana Mune comes in naturally clutch here. To add even more power to the mix, Corky can go Infinity Edge afterwards or Solari Charge Blade. After that, he's going to build one of the other he hasn't built yet, and then that's it. If you're able to auto attack a lot, Solari Charge Blade is going to be insane as your second item. You're a spell weaving hyper carry, so you'll have consistent Solari stacks for days, which means you're going to deal insane amount of DPS. The fifth build comes for Lucian. Here we have a little special that's supposed to give you a little bit more power a little bit earlier than usual. For this, we are going to make use of a so called component build. First, we shop a BS Sword for 1500 gold and gain the ghost trade towards the Solari Charge Blade. The reason we are doing this is rather simple. Unless we are able to get a kill and complete the Infinity Edge before the first objective, we are forced to sit on the Cloak of Agility. By going for a Solari Charge Blade from that Crit Cloak, we are accelerating our power spike a bit and that is going to help us snowball the game a little bit earlier. Yet again, Lucian is also a Spellweaver, so Solari Charge Blade is a godlike item for him. So for items, go BS Sword into Solari Charge Blade, then finish the Infinity Edge and afterwards go for Navori Quick Blades. On average, unless you're facing massive amounts of armor, the amount of extra spells you're going to gain from the Navori Quick Blades will outperform the armor pen at that point. Sixth on the list is Alistair, and this cow has been forgotten for far too long and it's finally time for him to celebrate his return. Players have grown way too complacent with the idea that supports just sit back and enjoy watching a show. Furthermore, they are not used to it anymore that the support is literally unkillable for an extended period of time. Even better, Alistair is also able to beat up solo laners in a 101 thanks to his tankiness. But the real deal comes into play once Alistair completes his deadman's plate. Upon buying this item, he's finally unleashed in terms of traversing the map. He can simply walk to any lane as he pleases and dive people from 100 to 0 without having a minion wave close to him. All he needs for that are a few allies around him that help him to dish out the damage. Otherwise the tower will claim his life eventually. And things get really funny though once Alistair gets his hands on the Sunfire Aegis. Since the champion loves staying inside the entire enemy team, he gets quite the value from that item. Especially once the item is fully stacked and his auto attacks apply the extra damage over time effect. Try it out and let me know how it went for you. Our seventh pick of this list is Horiana, who can be flexed into two different roles. She's a mid lane control mage that can also be played in the dragon lane. Her greatest asset is her ability to control fights from a decent distance. Not only that, but also her zoning capabilities are something that you have to consider whenever you see this champion. And here's a little trick that you should definitely make use of in your own games. Did you know that you can hide the ball in a wall so the enemy can't see it? Therefore the enemy won't feel the immediate danger as they're unable to see the ball and as we all know, if you can't see something, it doesn't exist. Insert happy Evelyn and Akshar noises. Once they're close enough, you relocate the ball so fast that they're unable to respond. Their eyes won't even look at themselves because they're so hyper-focused on your movements. They won't see the ball coming and all that's left for you is to press ultimate and the victory is almost yours. To make sure though that you have the highest damage possible when doing so, I recommend a snowball item such as Ludens Echo into a rabbit on staff cap. That way you'll get the highest amount of AP possible, but don't forget you're not as tanky as with an Archangel staff. 
Our 8th pick is Akshan, and even though he has been nerfed in the most recent patch, he is still strong enough to pack a solid punch. He is still a dominant pick in the middle lane and is still able to influence the surrounding lanes with ease. You can also make the argument that he's quite similar to Katarina in terms of having a kit that benefits quite a lot from resets. Being able to swing around multiple times during a fight can really make the difference as the spell needs an unhealthy amount of DPS. Things also get especially unbalanced once you complete Blade of the Rune King and Wit's End or Infinity Edge. Thanks to your double on hit mechanic, you're constantly applying on hit effects twice and your third ability also applies them. Obviously, they did a little bit less damage with it, otherwise it would be too broken. Last but not least, we have the ninth build for you. Pantheon gained some more popularity over the course of the season and is a real pocket pick for the Baron and the jungle position. Sometimes you might even whip him out in the middle lane, but that's only rarely an option. But what exactly makes him so strong? Did you ever pay attention to his empowered second ability and what it does? It hits you multiple times while applying on hit effects. Now if you add items like Black Cleaver and Blade of the Rune King to the mix, you can pretty much guess where this is going. You're taking away huge chunks of the enemy's HPs almost instantly and therefore get them closer to the execute threshold of your first ability. Once they're close enough to that HP value, your first ability is going to explode them. And it's literally that easy. And that wraps up today's video. Thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to get more Rift Guides content in the future.